So here's my Demando controller ready to be installed. The ribbon cable has a lot of unused lines not on it. That's pretty typical what I do. So for future expansion, I've got some other things going in there. And uh, for right now, we just need three of these lines. This has been primed, sanded and primed with sandable black dupla color automotive primer. And I gotta tell you, it is a near match, um, except for the rubberized texture on the thing. I wanna keep it, but you can't do that with primer. It won't last, so we will have to paint it. But gosh, it sure looks nice. So here we go, installing the Demando unit into the SLK. If you've been following the story, you know from an earlier mod, I added, tapped into this switch. These are unused buttons in the OEM installation. So I made them into working buttons by cutting a piece of plastic inside that just prevented them from pressing. And then uh, added some wires in here. One pair is the home button, one pair will be the back. So the controller is going, is designed to fit right into this spot. Screwed in on each side. It's for field testing. I'm just going to twist these wires together. So the first set are the wires coming out of the stock switch that's been modified for home and back. These are the wires coming out of my controller. And we're only going to use three of these wires for now. And these are the power uh, lines that should be connected to switched power in the car. For now, I'm going to use this battery box. This is just a field test installation, temporary. So I'm installing only two of the three screws in the other switches. So they're back. Put the knob in place. And there we have it. Okay, so turning it on. Let's go. The navigation controller is ready and running in iOS mode. Oh, how nice. So let's uh, move around in here. How about uh, what's on Sirius Radio? Uh, how about Venus? Justin Timberlake. And I should be able to navigate back. Back. Oh, nice. Now, um, let's say, yeah, that we are in something. Remember, we set these up. So, uh, this should be the back button. Oh, sweet. Hey, Siri, what's the current time? Dial it into ways. <laughs> oh, I am so liking this. Let's put the phone out of sight. Connect the uh, lightning adapter to it. Keep in mind, this is not installed, so it's sticking up higher than it will, but there's going to be plenty of room there. A navigation controller in an SLK R171. Tomorrow we try this with Android. There's a lot more that this thing does. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So uh, let's start by changing the mode of the uh, of the controller. To do that in iOS mode. I'm going to hold down the back button 10 seconds. And this should switch it into Android mode. And then we will pair it with the Android device. The navigation controller just changed to Android mode. There we go. A casting device. This is an inexpensive one, or you can use an authentic Google Chromecast. It's going to mirror the Android screen and send it into the same input that we would otherwise use if we were hooked up with iOS that would be coming out of the lightning 
to video adapter. So this is the the video adapter box that goes off to the head unit's video interface and this is the casting device that takes the signal over the air from the Nexus tablet. The navigation controller is entering pairing mode. I really felt a special connection between us. Farewell. So here we have an Android tablet. This is a Nexus 7. Sweet product. It's running the latest version of um, Marshmallow and we're mirroring it on the screen. If I rotate the knob like this you come back up here. Now this is a wireless connection, but you'd want to hook it up with a cable anyway to charge your battery. But it works through screen casting rather than the lightning cable like iOS. So we can take a look at what's on the radio here. And in this regard, as I turn the knob like this, I'm going to get an identical experience to what we saw with um, the iOS version of this. Uh, the screen layout's a little different because I set it up that way for tablets. I'm going to change that so it's more legible and make it match what we saw yesterday. Now, a neat thing about Android is it understands back key. It really likes the back key. So when I hit this, we can navigate back as we'd expect. Do a long press where I press and hold this down. I can actually switch between apps. So this can jump me directly into Google Maps. Or press and hold again. Come right back might want to want launch Waze with press of the button, press and hold. We can jump back into that app switcher and you can try different things. You know, maybe you want to listen to music. Now, you don't want to be distracted when you're driving with this, so I would recommend uh, do this when you're not moving. But nice to know the OS supports that kind of a feature. So I think it's time to set up the wires and do some road testing with this for a week or two, see how it works in the field.